Today is my final day before a haircut and our last show in our captain's quarters, and it's bittersweet because there's so much, so much we didn't get to. For example, I had hoped to introduce a talking John Hamm painting that didn't want to be here. I don't like this bit. I don't want to do it. I wanted to do a bit about checking in with my friend Ethan Hawke, who I'd put in charge of exterminating the wasps in my attic. Says that they've taken over, man. They've learned how to use tools. It's a, it's a nightmare. And I wanted Amy Schumer to be my first and only Captain's Quarters in-studio guest. You ran out of time? I thought your people would have told you. No, I've been sitting here for an hour and a half. I... I... Oh, I can I just plug, can I plug my show really we don't, quick? We really are short on time. Okay. Should I go? That'd be great. Thank you, Amy. And thank, I'm so sorry. This is awful. Okay. And, and I just need you to um, just keep 15 feet. 15? Yeah. I think it's six. I think you can make it right over the top of that thing. Thank you, Amy. Well, thank you. I'm so I mean, sorry I, about this. Me too. I, I really wish I'd known I took a ferry... You know, I took a ferry here. You, no, I was oh. told I could promote my boy, oh boy. my show. That's Inside Amy's Humor? No. Oh. The cooking show. And just, but maybe in the city I could talk about my show? That'd be great. We just didn't have the time. It's also the last day with all our friends behind me, and I'm happy to report that everyone who went on this journey with us found what they were looking for. I got a new voice. I got clean. Yeah, I got my own podcast, and uh, if you guys could tweet about it or whatnot, my people think that could be very helpful. And it turned out the ghost lobster who long tormented the sea captain only wanted companionship, and once he discovered that, the sea captain not only forgave him, he offered him the job of first mate on his ship. Thank you, sea captain. Thank you, friend. And the sea captain, well, he maybe got the best gift of all. I got to participate in a long psychotic bit that would have eaten in front of a live audience. Speaking of psychos... Final summer, St. Wave! Yet another of the president's close confidants, his former campaign manager and chief strategist, was arrested today for a wild scam that captures so much of what's rotten about Trumpism. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. I don't need to tell you guys that everything's bad and good news is very rare, but when it does come along, why not gorge ourselves on it? Even when it comes later in the day, causing you to rip up a finished closer look and start from scratch. Hey, you guys remember Steve Bannon, the white nationalist slash giant pimple who ran Trump's campaign, then worked in his White House and helped engineer such odious policies as the Muslim ban and who publicly defended the horrific family separation policy, often wore two shirts when one would have sufficed. You know, the dude who had a crazy person whiteboard in his office with policies scrawled on it like suspend immigration from terror-prone regions, implement new extreme vetting techniques, and suspend the Syrian refugee program. I'm shocked it also didn't include brunch with Slenderman and kill the Batman. You know, Steve Bannon, the gentleman who currently looks like a guy selling exotic reptiles on the Venice Beach boardwalk. Steve Bannon wasn't born, he just burst out of someone's chest quato style. He looks like a where are they now about the face melt skeleton from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Look at this. It's like if the Crypt Keeper spent a month in a tanning booth. Well, now that we've piled on, we can move on. Oh, wait, I forgot. One more thing. You guys, he got arrested. <laughs> News just coming out from the Southern District of New York saying that Steve Bannon and three other men uh, have been arrested and indicted uh, and charged in relation to their role uh, in a nonprofit organization called We Build the Wall. It's a crowdfunding organization that the SDNY says uh, has raised about $25 million uh, for wall related funding. Uh, what the uh, indictment here is alleging is that Bannon and these others were skimming some of the proceeds from that fundraising for themselves, uh, even though they had suggested publicly that uh, there, this was a volunteer organization and they were not taking salaries. Steve Bannon, through a nonprofit organization under his control, Nonprofit One, as it's referred to here in the document, received over $1 million from We Build the Wall, at least some of which they say Bannon used to cover hundreds of thousands of, of dollars in his own personal expenses. You know what, baby? It's been a brutal six months, so I'm gonna mainline some schadenfreude. Line that up on a mirror and give me a dollar bill to snort it with. <laughs> Woo! Seriously, did prosecutors know this was our last summer show in the captain's quarters? Because this is a fantastic parting gift. That's right. Steve Bannon was arrested for allegedly skimming a million dollars from a scam charity that claimed to be raising money to build the southern border wall. This is the 
perfect encapsulation of the Trump era. From beginning to end, the wall was a nonstop scam. Trump scammed his supporters by telling them Mexico would pay for it. Then we ended up paying for it. Then this baked potato Fabio over here said he'd raise money for it. Then he scammed everyone again by allegedly skimming money from it. It's a Russian nesting doll of fraud. I can't wait until Bannon raises money for his legal defense fund and we find out he lost it all at the racetrack. Uh, sir, please, we uh, would love you to leave. You're scaring the horses. And as NBC's Pete Williams reported today, it's pretty obvious this thing was a scam from the jump. According to the court documents, this we build a wall thing uh, came and flamed out very quickly. According to the court documents, the founder of it, this, uh, this man, Brian Colfage, uh, said that he would not take any of the money, that it was an entirely volunteer effort, but it said he did take a lot of money. And as for Steve Bannon, it says he formed a nonprofit organization that he controlled. It received about a million dollars from this crowdfunding effort, some of which the Justice Department says he used to cover, and I'm quoting here now, hundreds of thousands of dollars in Bannon's personal expenses. The court documents basically say that this thing was pretty suspect from almost from the beginning. I mean, of course it was. A crowdsourced fundraiser to build a wall in the middle of the desert? The only way it could have been a more obvious scam is if they offered free boner pills with every donation. The thing was one rung below those companies that claim to name a star after you. Oh yeah, that one up there is, uh, that's uh, Dan. That'll be 5,000 bucks, cash only. The details of this arrest are just absolutely incredible. Every little tidbit is better than the last. For example, according to CNN, Bannon was arrested on a boat Thursday off the eastern coast of Connecticut by federal agents along with officials from the United States Postal Inspection Service. He got arrested on a boat by the Postal Service. The Postal Service has a Navy? Please tell me it's just a mail truck with a giant cannon. Nothing is more fun than imagining a bunch of Postal Service inspectors in their short shorts, boarding a yacht and arresting Steve Bannon in a dramatic high sea sting operation, swinging down on a rope, carrying letter openers like swords. How has there never been a CSI post office? Something tells me David Caruso would definitely come back for that. Looks like this package has been returned to sender. <laughs> That's how he held his hands, right? After he put on glasses, very delicately like this like he was still holding them. Seriously, think about how perfect this is. The same public agency Trump is currently trying to destroy, one of the most cherished public institutions in America, arrested his former campaign manager for allegedly skimming money from a fundraiser for their scam border wall. Two days after we found out Trump's previous campaign manager colluded with Russian intelligence. It's like the end of the summer TV season and they're wrapping up all the story arcs at once. This really is such a perfect encapsulation of Trumpism. It's all a giant grift. Bannon was getting rich and so was Trump. The dude's constantly at his own properties. Lobbyists and foreign officials stay at his hotels to curry favor. His sons are going around the world drumming up new business. They're all just fattening their wallets and doling out cash to their rich buddies while they take health insurance and unemployment benefits away from millions of Americans who are suffering and out of work. Trump was asked this afternoon about Bannon's arrest and all he could muster was this. I think it's a very sad thing for Mr. Bannon. I think it's uh, surprising. Oh, really? You're surprised? Trump's probably just surprised Bannon had the idea before him. Jewelry and a boat? How come I don't have a boat? My hair would look great. Flapping in the sea breeze. Trump then seemed to offer some kind words for Bannon. I do think it's a sad event. And again, Steve has had a, a great career at Goldman Sachs. Oh, Goldman Sachs. Well, that's a surprise. Those guys have never done anything untoward. That's like saying, he was in the mob? I'm shocked. He had such a great career in sanitation. Why would you just throw that away? Seriously, at this point, Trump has enough criminals around him for the Ocean's Eleven remake. Of course, that movie would end 10 minutes after Trump gets the team together and one of them live streams it on Facebook. Okay, that's the top secret plan. Lev, I, I can't help but notice you're making a front-facing video right now, and it seems like, based on the, the beeps that are coming out of your phone, you're getting live feedback on it. These guys just cycle through one scam after another. Remember, even before he became president, thanks to not one, but two criminal conspiracies on his behalf, then got impeached for trying to orchestrate another one. He settled a fraud lawsuit over Trump University. His charity was dissolved for misusing funds. He was even sued over a scam vitamin company, and now he's doing it all over again. President Trump says the White House is looking into a new unproven coronavirus treatment called oleandrin. It's made from the oleander plant. It's extremely toxic. It's been used in coronavirus trials involving monkeys, but it's been never tested on people. Oleandrin? Has, have you heard of that as a possible therapy for coronavirus? I've heard of it, yes. Is it something that people are talking about very strongly? 
We'll look at it. We'll look at it. We're looking at a lot of different things. Okay, first of all, anytime you ask Trump a question about anything, he's going to respond by saying, we're looking at it. He'll never admit he doesn't know what you're talking about. It's why he will never fall for a prank question. If you ask Trump, sir, does it smell like updog in here? He would say, people are saying it and we're looking at it very strongly. We're looking at updog. Uh, we're looking at down dog. We're looking at all, all the dog uh, directions. You know, uh, we have the best updog in the world. A lot of people, a lot of people are saying it. You're hearing it more and more under Trump. There's very little news talking about updog under Obama. <clears throat> I made myself uh, choke doing a Trump impression. So now Trump is uh, touting a plant extract to cure coronavirus. Honestly, it's only a matter of time before he shows up in the White House lawn with some crystals and a dream catcher. The guy will fall for literally any old person scam. I'm convinced the only way we'll get him out of the White House is by selling him a reverse mortgage and waiting for him to default. Damn it, I knew you'd betray me, Magnum. Not only is oleandrin not a COVID cure, it's a deadly plant poison. So now he's suggested ingesting bleach, hydroxychloroquine, and a deadly plant poison. Even better, combine those three in a bowl with some Sudafed and a battery acid. Dunk your battery acid in it, and you should be totally cured. That will not surprise you to learn. Trump did not get this idea from a doctor or one of his actual medical experts that works for him. He got it from yet another one of his many snake oil salesmen he surrounds himself with. Mike Lindell is the CEO and founder of MyPillow. He's also the chair of President Trump's re-election campaign in Minnesota. He reportedly helped arrange an Oval Office meeting with the president in July about oleandrin. Lindell tells CNN the president was enthusiastic. Just for our, our viewers, you have no medical background. You're not a scientist. A guy called you in April, said he had this product. You are now on the board and going to make money from the sale of this product. No, no, the no. The reason no, he no, reached no. out to you is because you have the ear of the president. So you, he gets no. a meeting with the president and you no, stand to make money no, from this. How do you sleep Anderson, at night? Anderson, that's your narrative. Why would I do this? Ask yourself, why would ruin my reputation if I didn't, if I didn't have believe in this product? You don't have a great oh, reputation. Really? Yeah. My pillow guy thinks he has a great reputation. Though when people know you as the My Pillow guy instead of your actual name, you don't have a great reputation. You're just one rung above Keyboard Cat. No one knew the cat's name, unless it was Keyboard Cat. I don't think it was. I mean, this whole thing is like the question mark guy demanding a table at the palm and screaming, "Don't you know who I am?" So the My Pillow guy has the ear of the president and is pushing him to advertise a deadly plant toxin as a cure for coronavirus. This guy, I mean, he's just dead set. I'm putting people to sleep one way or the other. We are living inside a 3 a.m. infomercial. We can't give you ventilators or unemployment benefits, but every American will be getting a shake weight and a slanket. What all this proves is that the country is currently being ruled by a deranged political coalition that's incapable of governing and is interested only in enriching himself at the expense of voters. And now they've left the country in ruins while they're lining their own pockets. A thousand Americans are dying a day. Tens of millions are out of work and many more are suffering and the president's cronies are cashing in with boats and jewelries and hawking scam plant toxins. Donald Trump badly botched the response to a deadly plague that has left 170,000 Americans dead. It caused the worst economic crash since the Great Depression. We have outbreaks in schools. Parents don't know what to do about childcare. Veterans aren't getting their prescriptions in the mail. Everything from the school system to the post office is broken. The post office. We had to come together to save the post office. It's like something out of an 80s teen comedy. Come on, guys, if we win Battle of the Bands, we can use the money to save the post office. Whoa, is it just me? Can that werewolf play guitar? Trump is not unique, and he's not an anomaly. Bannon and the My Pillow guy and all the Republicans enabling them prove that. They're all Trump. And the only way out of this mess is a thorough national rejection of their toxic ideology. It won't save anything, but it is a start. And if that doesn't work, I guess we can just rely on the Postal Service to take him down. After all, if Today's news is any indication it's something that people are talking about very strongly. This has been a Closer Look. Tonight ends a run of 68 out of studio shows that began in March. Shows we did from hallways, garages, attics, and of course here in the captain's quarters, aka my in-laws house. Our remote shows uh, started bumpy. And while they never got totally smooth, I do think they got a little better. And for that, I want to thank, among other people, uh, Matt Parker. I don't know Matt, uh, but when this first started, he made a YouTube video with tips on how late night hosts could better produce shows from home. And I reached out to him and he was an incredible resource. He was so helpful and it was a real reminder of how amazing a place the internet can be when good people use it with kindness. And I do want to thank everybody who watched this show, everyone engaged with us, everyone who voted in our 
sea captain polls because I have not had a single person in the room with me for any of these shows, uh, but I have never once felt alone. And in these awful stressful times, that was such an incredible gift. I wanna thank my crew in New York who figured this out, my writing staff who didn't miss a beat. I wanna thank my many friends who recorded voiceovers for me. And Seat Captain, if it's not too much to ask, could you take us out with a song? Sure thing, Seth. When I find myself in times of trouble. Oh, so, sorry, Seat Captain, we can't, we can't clear that song. Oh, right, right. Well, how about a little sea shanty then? Great. The moon is full, the sea is calm, we're ready to depart. No way to know the ending when you're standing at the star. And for all those lads and lasses waving at the pier, let this be the last song that they this night shall listen to. Oh, goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you on the other side For what goes out comes in again, just like the rising tide When life is tough and the water's rough, have a good friend at your side Goodbye, goodbye, Bye. I'll see you on the other side Oh, this past half year has been severe, on that we all agree But I have no doubt we'll make it out if I have you here with me So batten down the hatches, boys, and pull your mask on tight I promise there'll be morning if we make it through the night Oh, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. See you on the other side for what goes out comes in again, just like the rising tide. It's not the road I would have chose, but I sure enjoyed the ride. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you on the other side. Oh, goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you on the other side. Side. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. We, we love, love you. Daddy, it's time to go. It's time to go? But Axel, Hi. where does that door lead? I don't know. That's an all I need to know. Let's go, boys. Why? Just, we're gonna go. No, not another time. We've done it one Don't give away how many times we've done this. Yeah.